Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Shenanigans. We're deep in the middle of a mystery here. Who stole Gary Oldman's chest of money? He well, actually, he didn't take the chest, <laughs> but the money is gone. Okay. So, where are we? We're in the alleyway. You've just taken Bobby's boots. <laughs> That's true. Um, mm -hmm. What do the four of you want to do? Quickly, the wine drinkers. Is this like a nice part? Like, could they afford all this wine that they're drinking? Is this like a is this like a normal thing that they could have, or is this like odd that they have all this wine? You know, that's a fantastic question. That wine is. and wine bottles are not always the cheapest thing, especially if it like comes in a nice bottle. Um, but if they are if they have reasonable jobs, it wouldn't be unreasonable for them to have this. I think you need to know a little bit more about their finances and what they do for a living. Uh, all we know is that one of them is unemployed and living on a boat, and the other one used to be an attorney, but now he stays at home and takes care of his kids. Kid, singular. Great question. Hmm. Well, I think the first thing to do is compare these boots against the footprints. Yeah, the, how's the tread? Yeah. You want to head back and take a look? Yeah. Just down the alley. It's just yeah. down the alley, 500 feet. Oh, no, that's right. We went to the docks. You're, you're 500 feet from the, the house. You're fairly close. Yeah, we haven't gone to the docks just yet. You're on the way to the docks. You can continue to the docks. You can go back to the house, whichever one you want. Or something else entirely. Well, let's check the tread, because that will inform our questioning of Mary. Mm. Well, yeah, you come on back, and the treads are a match. A dead match. Even to the point of, like, there's a stick sort of stuck in the treads, and you can see the mark where the stick is sort of like stuck in the treads on the boot prints down there. Mm. It is an identical match. Someone would have to go really far out of their way to fake this set of boot prints if that's what they were trying to fake. That seems unreasonable, as I say so it. The culprit stole a large amount of money, took their boots off, and left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these boots in this alleyway. Now we have the boots. The so now that we know where the boots were found, does it look like they got stuck in the mud and someone got out of them? No. Or it like they were just set there? They were set there side by side. Okay. As if someone took them off and just set them down. Well, the boots do link someone with a crime, so maybe that's why they abandoned them. Should we ask Gary if these are the son's shoes? Well, how would he know? But... Yeah, why don't we ask the son? Yeah. See if the son is barefoot. Mm. Well, I might. Well, I'm just. Well, thinking... any of the wine drinkers barefoot other than uh, poor Bobby? <laughs> what if the what if the sister stole the brother's shoes to frame him? That's why she left the boots there. <gasps> Ooh. <sighs> Who sells boots in town? Oh. The cobbler, Connor. Uh, can you switch us to map view? We're yes. in shenanigans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Here is a view of Berkshire. And you said the treading's pretty specific now. Yeah. yeah, it's exact. Okay. So you guys are like down here somewhere. I'm gonna give you past a... Joey's. Uh, <laughs> past Tammy's and past Minnie's and past you said past Joey's as well. Well, I took notes. Maybe it meant then past you're Joey's just past room. Joey's, and then the cul-de-sac <laughs> loops back around like this, and now it's down here. There you go. <laughs> He's an old man. He he took the wrong turn. I'm gonna give you a, a more localized map as I draw. All right, all right, all right. All right so, does this, is there an ownership label inside the boots saying who they are owned by? No. Or even initials in the boots. No. All right. Well, some people do that. Yeah. yeah. Some people do that. <laughs> well, we'll collect the DNA evidence and then wait for some way of analyzing it to be invented. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going to take forever. Yeah. All right. Does Gary oh, still pitch back from the well yet? Whatever, whatever DNA evidence we find. We then take that to a witch and get her to put a curse on it. You know mm -hmm. how, like, using the voodoo, like yeah. using someone's yeah. hair to allow you to cast yeah. a curse on them? And then we All look right. around to see who's been cursed. 
Mm. Oh, Candy's uh, Candy's just over there. Candy's She's a, a bitch. bitch. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there any toenails inside the boot? No. Ah. Uh, we've got good. no DNA then. Mm. Are the boots sweaty? Yes. Mm. Bobby wasn't wearing any socks when he was wearing them. Uh, Cross contamination. Bobby. Yeah, we don't want to curse Bobby yet. <laughs> All right. Well, first, uh... wait. I think there was something we said we were going to do first before we go back and. Well, well we're going to ask Gary if the shoes are his sons. All right. So I'm going to explain this map to you because it might be a little bit confusing because yeah. it's kind of dumb. Uh, this is the road that comes on down. Here is the cul-de-sac. This Money is road. Gary Oldman's house. And yeah. this is the alley in which you found the boots and you found them like over here. And where's Tammy's or Joey's? Where's Joey's? Joey's, we would have to go up a ways and over and Joey's Sits Wait. like this came from Cougar Town, Courtney Cox. Now and we're at Joey's, but like, mm. how are we? Mm -hmm. How are we past Joey's though? You guys need to go find a candle maker now. It's a Chandler joke for those of you that I don't know your old time jobs. Like work of Bing into there. Yeah, like if we should ask Bing where to find the Chandler. <laughs> But no, you had to cut it off. Sorry. <laughs> a good thing you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so we've got the two residences at the cul-de-sac, boots found in the... Uh, and we're going to ask Gary about the uh, wine he got, the buried wine. You want to ask someone about the buried wine? Oh yeah, Gary. Like they said, Gary. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask if you. Like, I want to see if he remembers what he was up to the day, before, like whenever they said that he was doing the wine thing. Oh yeah. I want to see if he remembers what he was doing. Sure. I don't want to mention it. See if he <laughs> says the same thing. So you find Gary. Um, he's pulled out some wood. He's got a fire going. He has filled the kettle and he's uh, struggling to hang it over the fire as you guys come back into the house. And once he gets it up there, he looks at you and goes, "Oh." You found the gold? Splendid, splendid. Where is it? Anyway. We haven't found the gold yet. We have found <sighs> muddy boot. <laughs> well, I knew where the muddy boot prints were to begin with. Yeah, yeah we... they came from these shoes. Yes. Oh. Are these your son's boots by any chance? My son? Why do you keep thinking my son stole from me? Well, you said only someone who would know where your treasure was. Oh, right, right, okay. That makes sense. And these were yeah. found Unless you... in stocks. He examines them and squints closely and goes, uh, uh, To be honest, I don't spend a lot of time looking at my son's shoes. I, I can't, I can neither confirm nor deny that those are my son's boots. Well, Maybe yeah. he has them? His own boots? Think back to right before school started. Did you yes. perhaps buy these boots for him? Well, that was a long, long, long time ago. My son's like 55 years old. He hasn't been in school 40 years. But no, these are not the boots I bought him 40 years ago. <laughs> no, those were sandals actually we couldn't afford boots back then you know did you perhaps buy sandals and then he might have added to them and made these boots that's ridiculous you can't make boots from sandals it's like making a house from trees it's just ridiculous <laughs> unheard of a tree house only if you're a Nancy elf. <laughs> In the interest of justice, I'm going to let that slide. <laughs> oh, are you an elf? Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I was just 
frustrated with the lack of progress in my investigation. Please, forgive me for snapping at you. I I get cranky these days. That's, that's understandable. This is a difficult case. The old man looks towards Randall, who looks like he's about to ask the old man a question, and he lo- lowers his gaze at you and goes, What is it? You've been looking at me? Yes. Uh, do you recall what you were up to earlier? Of course. Uh, yeah, I got maybe. up about three hours before the sun, and um, <laughs> I-, I watered all the plants on the yard. Oh, sure. how-, how did you know when your son got up if you hadn't seen him? <laughs> Illumis, the sun god. So Illumis is the sun. Thank you, Neil. (laughs) Anyway, I got up, I took a piss, I watered the plants, and then I went to the blacksmith shop. Where are these plants? Uh, Are there any plants in this room here? (laughs) They're all outside around the house. You you should let me talk. (sighs) You're a snapper. I went to the blacksmith and saw if he had finished the wine racks that I had uh, ordered from my from my neighbors. They never invite me to hang out with them. They're so cruel. The five of them, six of them, are such a close-knit community, and yet I feel completely left out. They never hang out with me. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I'm trying to get in good with them, and so I built them these the wine thing holders. Is those plants are canon. Can't take it back. They're there. Right, right. The plants are there. Yes. I would never plant them for any reason. They're of course there. Because we're not interested in planted evidence. Good, good. (laughs) Anywho, I got the wine holders, and uh, then while the sun was still not quite up yet, I went around the neighborhood hiding the wine holders with bottles of wine in them all over the place, hoping my neighbors would become my friends. Uh, And that's when I saw it. Oh, Lady what? Hibbleton was going to town. Some bloke who was not her husband. <gasps> oh. I knew it. Sir. Was it her wife? No. Okay, just making sure that she wasn't a lesbian and this was like like that joke where like the doctor says, I can't. <laughs> operate on him he's my son <laughs> father just making sure that's not a joke that's a riddle that exa- that examines the the male bias in a profession such as doctors it's not a joke it's a so serious matter the real so joke there someone is the <laughs> who's making fun of elves for being nancy's but okay well <laughs> look i'm old and stuck in my ways mm. So, and, and those ways you, are, are equality and fairness between the sexes and the supremacy of the human race over the Nazi elves. There's no offense. Right, I'm okay. sure you're one of the I, good ones. I, I, okay, according to your testimony, you watered your plants. Yes. You tried to visit your son. Sure, you tried to visit your daughter. Yeah, then you uh, got some wine bottles, buried them. I didn't bury you, them, but... Yes. Or you hid them. Yeah, yes, I hid them. Yeah. Yes. Or then you came back home and the, your wealth was stolen. No, I hadn't gotten to the rest of my day yet. You keep interrupting me. I <laughs> hid the wine everywhere. Then I went to go try and see my son, but he wasn't down at the docks and I couldn't find him. And I got lost down on the docks and uh, my hips were hurting me. So I had to sit down for a little while and rest them. And I had a couple of drinks and some food and... um. And then I went to go see my daughter on the other side of the town, but it's a long trek and it takes me a while in my advanced age. And so I couldn't quite get there in time and she wasn't there either. And eventually at the end of the day, I came home and then that's when it was all missing and stolen. Yeah. So the important thing here is now we, we let's look for these footprints, the muddy footprints. What? Do they go on the front door, back door? Front door. Yeah. And yeah, yeah the... he has plants out in front of his front door. Footprints go... Well, I guess you can't see the whole trail. You can really only yeah. see the stuff that's in the house, but the assumption is that they do something like that. Yeah, look right. out the uh, window. There, there are he had plants he was watering that are right there near the, the muddy footprints. There are plants all over the place, um, near the right. muddy footprints, all the way around. The house has uh, many plants. I cast 
cross-examine plants on the plants by the muddy footprints. Do you have speak with plants? I bought it as an elf. All right. Particularly so I could have cross-examined plants. Oh my god. <laughs> Which is why I was making sure they were absolutely canon and you weren't going to take them back. Yes, there are plants here. Because <laughs> if okay. I said, I was waiting for you to tell me, because if I said, are there any plants around? Wait, so plants are as a, speak with plants is a fourth level spell. How do you get this? He's an elf. Fucking hell, it. it's a fourth level spell. <laughs> All right. You, it's a useless fourth level spell. One cast, a speak with plant spell enables the priest to converse in very rudimentary terms with all sorts of living vegetables, including fungi, molds, and plant-like monsters such as shambling mounds, and to exercise a limited control over and over plants, over normal plants, i.e. not monsters of plant-like creatures. Thus, the caster can question plants as to whether or not creatures have passed through them, <laughs> cause thickets to part to enable easy passage, require vines to entangle pursuers, and command similar services. The spell does not enable plants to uproot themselves and move about, but any movements within the plant's normal capabilities are possible. Creatures entangled by the first level spell of that name can be released. The power of the spell lasts for one round for each experience level of the casting priest. All vegetables within the area of the spell are affected. All right, you've got one minute to talk to these plants, so you had better be ready. I'm going to time it. All right, I'll be quiet. <laughs> All right, you let me know when you want to start your questioning. All right. Damn, I want to make them state their name for the record, but I don't want to <laughs> waste the time. <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> All right, um, also, we should be looking at this map. Which plants do you want to question? Because there's a whole what house of plants. By the muddy footprints. That's why I was asking specific. I was right. trying to get do all my information gathering so you couldn't take it back. Well, the footprints go out the front door, and right next to the front door, there are some calla lilies popping out of the ground. Don't know what those look like, and I don't have time to Google them now because I've only got one minute. Um, oh, well. Calla lilies. I guess I'll start now. Yep. Yes. Did you observe anyone besides the old man leaving the house this morning? No. Or entering? Not in the morning. He was the but... only person you saw come in or out this door? God, this is a hard question. Uh, in the morning? When? You, you, your question first was very specific, and this one's non specific. And before we arrived, did you see any other people besides the old man who lives here going in and out of the house? Yes. Who did you see? A person shrouded in a cloak, face hidden. Mm -hmm. Can you describe their clothing in detail? <laughs> Dark. And then the sun this came up. The per this person came in and out before the sun went up, came up? The plants have reverted to their natural state. <laughs> Your one minute has expired. The witnesses are no longer willing to be, are, are no longer useful. What, is there a They're lock on his front door? Bond? What? They're refusing to respond? No, no, the what the spell has expired. So they're refusing to respond. They're refusing to respond. Permission to treat the witness as hostile? Granted. I'm gonna kill these plants, Rob. Dear God, that's not what treating the witness as hostile means. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if it was though? The <laughs> lawyer's like permission to treat the witness as hostile, and then just Regret. pulls out a Beretta and holds it to the witness's head. Talk, talk. <laughs> All right, well, um, is Gary Oldman's front door have a lock on it? It does. Yes. Right. Can I gauge to see if it's been picked? Absolutely. Give me another gauge check. Um, right. Let me see what the modifiers are here. You can study right. this carefully if you want to take the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can get a plus four. You are sort of handling it, but I don't think that's going to count because you can't handle the inside of the lock. Mm -hmm. So we'll just give well, you the... I can with my thieves tools. Oh, that's true. Um, let's just do it at the plus four for now. All right, plus four. Yeah. All right. 
I do it manually because I'm adding plus four to this. Of course. Twenty-seven. Yeah. So you're looking at this lock. Um, there's been no. So when you to bypass a lock, there's a lot of ways you mm. can do it. Uh, mm. There is actually the picking of the lock, which is the slowest and the most careful, but it also leaves very little evidence, and you just open it. Most people, when they try and bypass a lock, use uh, more aggressive means to do it. Mm. You can sort of like jimmy a lock with some violence that will leave some marks, or you can usually just like pry open the door. It's usually easier just to take a crowbar to a door and snap it open. This door has no signs of forced entry anywhere on it. Even the lock looks like it hasn't been um, scratched or damaged um, in a in like recent time. So if someone, if someone entered through this lock um, illegally, unlawfully, they would have had to pick the lock very carefully or have a key. Hmm. Well, there's no signs of thieves marks outside, so I don't think it is a pro. So I'm suspecting someone with a key. Hmm. Okay, Mr. Moldman. Yes. Uh, who has a key to your residence? Oh, my son does, and my daughter. And uh, oh. I believe my my dead wife, his wife, well, you, my you widow. You buried her with a key? She was buried with all of her possessions that she cared deeply about, her jewelry, her, which I guess includes the keys to the house. <laughs> okay. Do you remember if you locked your door when you left this morning? Oh, you know, those things are automatic responses. You know, do you ever remember zipping your fly after you use the... No, of course not. You just... Sir, it's I so automatic, you don't remember. I, 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 I fly before I... You always check? Wait, zippers have been invented. I don't have to check. I have obscure memory. <laughs> That's quite obscure. <laughs> but, no, seriously, zippers have been invented. No, no, no. A zipper is a term for a series of small buttons that you have to, to do all the way up. Okay. You, you, you quickly zippy, like, button them up. Does, does he look the same as he did last time we talked to him? The old man? Gary old man? Yeah. Yeah. Is he a twin or is he the same person? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, on the surface he looks the same, but maybe there are hidden details? I don't know. I turn to the others. I'm not sure this is Gary Oldman. Because every time you see the real Gary Oldman, he looks completely different. <laughs> like you couldn't even tell it's the same guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll just do a gauge to see it's the same person. <laughs> 21. Uh, he looks like the same person, yeah. Pretty close, but you only got a 21. You can't be a hundred percent certain. Yeah. Gary I don't know Oldman. If he looks the same. That's kind of proof that he isn't Gary Oldman. <laughs> you know, I watched Henry and June last night, and I know that he was supposedly in the film, but I couldn't <laughs> spot him once. Now, granted, I was playing TFT at the same time, so maybe I, I missed his one scene or something. But that guy always looks completely different. Always completely different. Mm -hmm. Even when he's just like, I'm an office worker, and his office workers look nothing alike. His, uh, what's his name? The the police guy from Dark Knight. Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon. His Commissioner Gordon Sergeant is so Gordon. Orden, yeah. is so normal looking, but he also doesn't look like any other old men mm. I've seen before. Yeah, I mean, you, you never look at Commissioner Gordon and go, oh, hey, that's the same guy who played Sirius Black and the villain from Fifth Element. Right. Oh, well, that was Dracula. Uh, he played a cop in and Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> and uh -huh. he looked completely different from the Dark Knight mm -hmm. one, so. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, anyway. <laughs> um, okay, we, okay, only people with the key can access. So we have to check if the burial site's been disturbed for the key or the check the two children. Is there a rock? by any chance near or flower pot near the front door absolutely um there are those cow lilies on the left side of the door and on the right side of the door is a big flower pot filled with mint it's like a, a rock i look under the the flower pot first is there like the outline of a key and dirt or anything 
There is not. Are there any conspicuous rocks big enough to hide a key in the garden near the door, near the steps? Yes, yes, there are. And is there a floor mat? Like mm. a, a welcome mat to the door? Yes, yes, there is. We can check <laughs> under that too. There's nothing under it. All right. <laughs> what about under the rock in the garden? No, just dirt. No, nothing to indicate whether there like had been a key there, but now there isn't. There is no sign of a, a missing key. Okay. No, can I and identify these plants and whether or not they're useful for any of my herbalism proficiency? <laughs> yeah, give me an herbalism check. Okay. There we go. Ooh. Yes. You will notice that there are some interesting plants in the yard. Um, in the front yard, it's sort of nice, normal things. But once you hit the side and the back, there's some thistle leaf over here. The back has got some hemlock in it. Um, there are some dangerous and deadly plants. And only someone who is trained in herbalism or toxicology would really be able to understand that... Um, the backyard is sort of like a, a menagerie of dangerous things. And do I know whether or not you'd have to specifically, uh, yeah, like you'd have to specifically raise these plants and like? They're all sort of like common to the area, but it is yeah. un, you've never seen a collection of dangerous plants like this by coincidence. Sure, any mm. of these could be growing in a person's yard, but for all of them to be growing in a person's yard, is suspicious. And like, what kind of, what kind of people have I known to grow the, like, plants like this? Oh, maybe people who are professional herbalists. Mm -hmm. um, someone who has notices the medicinal properties of these. Someone who is uh, trying to use these things to cause harm or injury or distraction or um, screw with other people in some capacity. Um, maybe some sort of like scientist or botanist who is doing research or uh, a horticulturalist. You know, he does have a, a wide variety of things here. Maybe yeah. he just really appreciates their looks, but I mean, you know, hemlock's not the most pretty of plants. Yeah. Is, is herbalism off of intelligence or wisdom? I can't remember. That's a good question. Uh, it is off intelligence. Okay, um, because I want to do an herbalism check to find out if callow lilies are trustworthy. <laughs> You're not sure. So I'm going to pull the party aside and share all this information with them. So you're saying these plants could be shady. <clears throat> yeah, and, and uh, maybe Gary Oldman isn't who we think he is. Well, we haven't even asked him what his occupation used to be before he retired. Yes, let's find out regarding these plants. That's good information you got. Okay. Do you happen to know about <clears throat> the trustworthiness of callow lilies? I mean, you seem pretty well informed. Me? No, no. <laughs> or you're asking me? Yes. Um, I don't know. I don't think uh, plants... I don't really think about trusting plants or not. So. All right. All right, ladies, let's, <laughs> let's interrogate. So, Gary Old. Gary Old. Yes. You can just call me Gary, or you can call me Old Man. But this Gary Oldman is just, it's a weird thing to say. Please, please. Gary will do. Or old man. All right, we we did not in, intend any any serious uh, insult to you here. Understood. Yes. That's an interesting collection of plants you have out there. Why, well, thank you. Quite an odd variety of them. Oh, I suppose I'm a bit of a collector. Hemlock. Yes, yes. Hemlock. Some, some dangerous plants out there. Well, you know, in my lines of work, it's important to have a wide variety of tools at your disposal. 
What? Line of work, sir. Line of work. Oh, I've had many jobs over my life. Um, see, I started off as a tinker, uh, building small things, and then I became a tailor, uh, getting new threads. Then I was a soldier for a period of time, and that's when my career ended, and I never did anything after that. Your career ended there? Yes, I stopped you being a soldier. Do something else after being a soldier? No, I was a tinker, a tailor, and then a soldier. And then I took a long trip overseas on a vacation. Interesting, where did you go on that vacation? Eridon, but that's neither here nor there. And what was oh, this vacation for? There. Not here at all, it's there. It was for vacation purposes. My past has nothing to do with the present. <clears throat> What's happened to my gold? Have you found the person who's done it? Does the owl screech at midnight, sir? Is it bothered at midnight? Did it see a mouse? No. Did it get... Is it getting frisky? Because then it'll screech. And midnight's mm -hmm. the middle of its day. So maybe? Maybe. Maybe, okay. Anyway, we have some leads we're going to follow up on, sir. We will we'll return when we have something. I gesture for them to follow. All right. The party can head out. I think there's more to Gary Oldman than meets the eye. Mm, I, I agree. Think, I think there's yeah. even a plot twist which deepens <laughs> the mystery and complicates things. <laughs> Hmm. Well, I he's think Gary Oldman is a retired spy. That's why he went to Aradon. Exactly. That's why he has all these plants. Hmm. What does it all have to do with him being robbed, though? Maybe. Oh, nothing. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, I missed it. <laughs> I missed what you said. What, what does that do with the case? I mean, I said nothing. <laughs> if there's more to him than meets the eye, perhaps it wasn't gold that they were really after. Yeah, but the contents of the chest, we don't know. There could have been state secrets in there. Yes. Hmm. Maybe. Well, we'll never find out by just standing here. Maybe we should go question the the children. Uh, well, the top district is the closer. CIA, the Crown Intelligence Agency. Hmm. Well, they failed recently with those uh, Cuban nobles who were living in, didn't they? I mean, it was men in robe, right? Or like clothes. Dark robe. Yeah. Men in the dark robe. Um, who took off his shoes. So it could have been a spy dealing. We'll have to be careful. It could be that the evidence was planted there skillfully by a spy. Yes. It could even be, if he was a spy, that his wife was also a spy, like one of those deals where like two spies get married, but they're still like spying on each other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is she and even really dead or did she, she fake her death? Yes. Perhaps we should find out where his wife is supposed to be buried. Well, um, we can go talk with uh, the children. That would give us information. Definitely. Maybe we should find out if they're her children, or maybe they're his children from a previous marriage, and that's why she was mm. willing to throw her, her son Mary under the bus. Mm. Let's find Mary. Let's go to the docks and see if ask around for Mary Old Man. Yeah, we should definitely check out the son. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's definitely the next step. And maybe we can find out more about this marriage. Okay. We'll so, to the dock. off to the docks. The party leaves the wine drinkers and the old man behind and makes their way down to the dock district. 
Um, here there are all sorts of structures and taverns and boats hanging off the sides of things and uh, fish being hauled up and cargo being hauled down. People are busy. There's the, the harbor master over there with a the pen and paper and a clipboard, just finishing things up for the day as the sun begins to set. All right, mm. let's, so, let's look first at the Hickory Dickory War. Mm, the Hickory okay. Dickory? Yes. Yeah, let's go to Hickory Dickory. Fuck the is Hickory, Hickory Dickory? Dock. What is this? The Hickory Dickory Dock. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Come on, man. <Mitchell. laughs> what poem has Hickory Dickory Dock? I have no idea. The mouse ran up the clock. Oh. The clock struck one. The other two got away. <laughs> oh. I don't, I don't know what this is. I'm also not really familiar with this. Nursery yeah. rhyme. <laughs> I don't know a lot of nursery rhymes. Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse ran up the clock, the clock struck one, he run and he ran and down he run. Hickory Dickory Dock, that's it? He just runs up a clock and then goes down when it hits one o'clock? What, what does the mouse have to do? Where's he gotta go? <laughs> this nursery rhyme makes no sense. Why is the mouse on time schedule? As, as opposed to the, the itsy bitsy spider going up a water spout and then getting washed out? Well, shit, man, that's just what a spider does. He's trying to climb to the top and yeah, the poor, like... poor bastard gets washed out. I can empathize with the spider. What's this mouse doing running up and down a clock? Ridiculous. It got scared Maybe by the chime. Ridiculous. Maybe he's, he's trying to reach the top of an industrialized society. <laughs> all true, right, true. all right. But then, being from humble beginning, he's struck down by the corporate system. Well, I, the thing is, the problem is, I, I think a certain mouse is actually at the very top of the food chain in that situation. God. All right, you're down at the docks. There's no mouse and there's no clock. Well, is there a hickory dock though? There's no hickory. Okay. There's no hickory yep. smoked anything, and there's no hickory itself. I go to like somebody who would have been around all day. Yeah, you can find a um, what do you call it? a Thatcher who mm -hmm. has lost his sight, and now he just has to sit on the side of the dock all day sewing um, nets together. <laughs> he has lost his sight. Yeah, he's no, not a very good witness. Thatcher anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah. walk away from him. Okay, <laughs> walk back to the party. Uh, on your way back to the party, you see um, a, a barmaid who works at one of the bars here who has a, a window, like a view of the dock all day long because the big window's on it. Okay, I go to her. Okay. Is moving boxes. Who's moving boxes? Is, is the maid moving boxes? No, no, no. She's like tending bar. So I feel like you can't properly interrogate a witness. Mm -hmm. Unless they're moving boxes or something, yeah. And it's she's up. So they can't stop doing that yeah. to respond to like questions about a murder. Like murder? Yeah. No, I gotta move. These boxes. She's like, she's yeah. like waiting, right? Well, no, she's just God. she's still pouring drinks and serving them the people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. She's like got to. She's cleaning out these mugs while you're talking to her. She's got this whole line of dirty mugs, and she's got to clean them all. So she's very busy. But you can talk to her while she works. That's right. <laughs> All right, Buck. Not Buck. Sorry, you're not Buck anymore. You're Armand. Buck's gone. Armand. Armand. Armando. Again. Yeah, um, um, that was random. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, yes, sailor. Soldier. I, Who are you? you? Uh, um, <laughs> my name is Armand. Ah. Um, have you uh, seen a man wearing a set of robes and not wearing any shoes? Robes and no shoes? Yeah, I saw a priest earlier today. Came in here uh, looking for a drink. Had to send him packing. We don't like his kind in here. All right. Um, when was Come that? Come to think of it, we don't like your kind in here either. That was earlier today, four hours ago. Four to six hours ago. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Ma'am? Well, sir, <clears throat> this is not a place for you. Why don't you ask your questions and get on out? I'll, I'll, I'll step forward. I'll say, Ryder, Ace Attorney, ma'am, this is an official investigation. We can definitely use your cooperation. And I don't like her, your kind I, either. I <laughs> give her my most winning smile. Make me a charisma check at disadvantage. She's a hostile <laughs> person. 
She might not take kindly to your smiles. I also have glibness. She's oh. cleaning out this, these cups. She's polishing them like... My, my, my sustainability <laughs> scores all planted to Wisdom 16, Charisma 17, and Perception 16. Wow. Well, uh, give me two Charisma checks, and we'll take the lower of the two. All right, because I am completely... Back to the Glibness doesn't apply. I also have clean eyesight. Or clean eyesight <laughs> to help me spot clues. <clears throat> right. mm. 22. 22. Oh! She softens a little bit and goes, Sorry. We get a lot of nosy looky loose here. I can see you're just trying to do your job. What do you need? We're we're investigating a theft. The the clue we had is that there was a, a person wearing dark robes and that we found some boots that were worn by the culprit it seems. So that they were they were cast aside near here. So we're wondering if there was somebody in dark robes who but no What size boots? I'll say this size. <laughs> She takes a look at them and shakes her head and goes, none of my people did that. Are you sure you saw someone, you didn't see someone not wearing these? She like takes a <laughs> look throughout the rest of the room. And uh, if you follow her gaze, you'll see that the room is entirely populated with women. And these are men's boots. There's no way anyone in here was wearing them. Oh, is this the lesbian bar? Yes. Oh, it's the butcher shop. Oh, oh. All right, I see. Now, I notice you've got a clear view out the window here. Did you happen to see anybody? Wearing... She sets her mug down in frustration. Yeah. yeah, I saw people. I saw people come and go all day, but no one was wearing robes and barefoot. You don't walk barefoot on the docks. That's how you get splinters. You didn't see anybody not wearing these boots? <laughs> That's a lot of double negatives. What I'm telling you is that no one in the right mind would hang out on the docks barefoot all day. That ain't gonna happen. So they might have had a second set of shoes. Merry old man going by. Merry old man? Yes. Yeah, I saw him. Was he was he out and about? He was too busy to come home right now. But if you leave your name in <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> Mary. Merry old man, yes. Uh, I saw him. <laughs> He's a... Uh, he often comes around the backside, uh, looking to score some scraps. Poor guy's been down on his luck for a long time now. Hard right. to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. So did you see him doing anything suspicious? Just the usual begging for scraps. It's always a little sketchy. Was Had he wearing new shoes? looking for scraps after this morning. Mm. Uh, looking for scraps? Yeah, this afternoon. Around uh, noon o'clock. Maybe noon 45. I turned to the others. If he, if he took the money, he probably wouldn't need to beg for scraps. Exactly. No. Uh, when was the money taken? <laughs> well, the old man was out of the house all day, so we don't know when it was taken. It was only discovered in the evening taken. Mm -hmm. Could be, could be not. Did he look like he was trying to not be suspicious? No. <laughs> was he wearing a dark robe? No. All right. Was look, I've answered boots? all of your questions, but was... but I don't think that I have anything valuable to tell you. And I've got a lot of cups to clean here. All right. So if you'll <laughs> leave me to do I my job. Underestimate yourself. You have a lot of very valuable things to contribute. What sort of passive aggressive comment is that, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna break one of these cups. Not at all. You just didn't think you had anything. The cup hits the ground and shatters. She turns to you and points a finger. You get out of my bar before I show you why we call this the butcher shop. Okay, I walk out of the bar. I want to apologize, <laughs> my friend. I value the cup. I would like to replace that. Three silver. It's a glass mug. Those things are expensive. I'll give her five silver. All right. She takes I it. I apologize. 
right. Um, and if, uh, if you think of anything else that might help us, please, please, ma'am, I really appreciate it. Any breaks we get out of this case. She takes your card, takes a look at it, puts it in her pocket. I'll give you a call if I think of anything. But now you got to go, all of you. Wait, wait, mm -hmm. ma'am, one, one more thing. I, I, I just realized something about my card. Can I have it back for just a second? He hands it back to you. Okay, I get out my pen and ink. There you go. I've just been realizing I've been doing this all day. The card is not properly punctuated. And <laughs> I've not been saying the inflected punctuation and applying it when I speak it through inflection. And so I put, so after writer, I put comma, then ace, period, and then attorney, period. <laughs> <laughs> she takes the card looks at it I, it I really should have proofread these when I had them printed I understand <laughs> nice to meet you. you call me Ace Ace it's time for you to go mm. all right Fair she enough. kicks you all out of her tavern uh, cousin of mine, can you track? Can your dog track scents? Can my dog? Well, I have okay, a... so Neil. I have an. You have a war dog, right? Proficiency. Ooh. Okay. And animal handling proficiency. I don't know if that helps me. Uh, it could. That's so what... tell me about this war dog that you've bought. Why? Why do you have a war dog? What's it do for you? Uh, it helps me fight because i suck at fighting okay so, so it's for predominantly a, a combat dog yeah okay so might you have trained it to track sense if it's I mostly think I, for would, combat? I think i would have tried to do this um but you know it's not its primary use hmm because I mean, we do have the boots, but I hope it doesn't take us back to Bobby. I do have a spell we could use that I got specifically for this. Mm. Uh, so your dog is in the process of being trained to follow sense. Uh, I will give it a tracking check to, okay. to do it if you want to. So uh, how exactly are we trying to track this? Well, we've got boots owned by the culprit. Yeah, right. Okay. Maybe but the problem is it might let us to where we... Uh, where we found the boots, mm. that'll be the best place to pick up the scent. Okay. Yeah, and that's where I'll cast my spell too. All right. Uh, All right. Yeah. So we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The party returns to the spot where the boots were found initially. Okay. Yeah, so we're back or, in the alleyway we... near the house. Okay. Right. So before we start tracking, I want to cast thought capture. Ooh, another fantastic spell. I take a few steps back, so when I'm the radius. <laughs> One of the more bizarre contentions held by priests at the School of Thought is generally scoffed at by outsiders. The theory states that once a thought has occurred in someone's brain, it exists as a freestanding mental object. This thought object usually remains inside of the brain of the creature that created it, but sometimes it escapes. This is supposedly explains why people forget things. When this happens, the thought object stays in the geographical area where it was lost. Any receptive brain, usually the brain of a creature that initially created thought, can pick it up again um, simply by bumping into the invisible free-floating thought. According to the theory, this is the reason why people can regain lost thoughts by going back to the location where the thought was lost. This supposedly works because the free-floating thought is recaptured, not because the locale reminds them of the thought. Unfortunately for philosophers who disagree with this, thought capture seems to be extremely strong evidence of this theory. Which sounds like someone who was making spells for this game was like, hey, maybe this is why we forget things. Let me make a spell about why we forget. <laughs> it's a huge paragraph that has like very little to do with the mechanics of the spell. <laughs> it goes on for many, many, many more paragraphs. So how's it um, work mechanically? Mechanically, the priest gains one thought object per casting of the spell. The spell may be cast a number of times in the same locale, with the priest gaining different thought objects with each casting. A locale contains a finite number of thoughts, however, and once the priest has gained all of them, as per the DM, the spell will fail in that locale. So, 
Um, if, do, 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 if several thought objects are in the same vicinity, the priest will see perceive information about the most interesting or significant event. The priest might pick up images of a battle from the point of view of a warrior who died there, or might gain information about the victor of the battle. All right, so you're gonna cast thought object right near the boots. Yes, and I'm I'm thinking that you know thoughts about a crime that's been committed are gonna be more significant and stronger than hey free boots. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you cast thought object. Here we go. Ooh, you do get a good response. Let me figure out how to phrase it and word it while we let the rest of the party do something. Uh, rest of the party, what are you doing while he's thought capturing? Party. Uh, we were gonna try to track it, right? With the mm. dog? Oh, with yeah, the dog. Scent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so the thought object that you get is this like cackling laughter to oneself of like, <laughs> this will be perfect. They'll never expect it. Um, and, and with this like so mental the image of said expect it, expect it. Oh, okay. uh, with the mental image of somebody like taking off boots and setting them here and then climbing over the fence right here in the alleyway. Mm. It's as if so they, can I, can I they took the boots the... off and then climbed over the fence this direction. Will Dayton, I be able Dayton. to recognize the thought voice? Um, like I, no. I'm myself, I'm thinking in my voice. Right. This is more of like a cackling evil laughter. Uh, you don't recognize it on hand, offhand. All right. What is this right. fence look like? The fence? It is a, a wooden slatted fence, comes up to just above head height. Maybe if you were like really tall, it would come up to just about your eyes. Um, and it's old, not in great condition. There's some trash cans in the alleyway, some old boxes and refuse that are lying around, uh, some discarded scraps of trees and grass cuttings. I can only speak with the plant once a day, unfortunately. Mm. But this fence looks like probably, well, I don't know. I mean, I guess I was about to say he's an old spy, but, and that maybe he wouldn't be able to climb the fence. But I mean, was he like, like bearded old man spy, like, you know, uh, Sean Connery, old man spy, I could probably <laughs> easily climb the fence, or like, oh, oh, my days of climbing things more than the height of a well, step are long past. We did see him walking around on a broken stuff. Yes, broken staff. It was broken on the end. Could that be a clue? Hmm. I thought it was just broken because he had, it was worn and he had used it. It just well, seems that's what you like want us to think. detail for the universe to provide for us. Hmm. Well, and uh, also, and the, also the lady Hilton story. The tracking check from the dog, it picks yeah. up the scent of the boots that you wave in front of it, and it puts its nose on the ground and starts following the the tracks or not the tracks, the, the scent, and he goes this mm -hmm. way. It's this way. Is it heading back to? And he goes this <laughs> way. Yeah. Is it going is to this and then he comes over here and he goes and runs around out, out front of this house. There's a house right over here. And he keeps running around. He goes up and starts scratching at the door of that house. Okay. Is, is it Bobby's house? No, it is not Bobby's house. Bobby lives on a boat. Mm hmm. In a parking lot. I'm going to look around in the windows of this house. You can see inside by candlelight are uh, jewels and Ellie and Lori and Travis and Grayson and Andy and Bobby, and they're all inside. There's this giant vase made out of glass that has broken over the table. Jules is in tears as wine flows everywhere. Everyone else is hanging their heads. The two other women are like trying to console her while the boys are like 
looking away and not trying to say anything, you can see Andy looks extremely guilty, like a dog who's just done something wrong. So he could have just tracked Bobby because he's in there. Mm. Yes. The boots probably have the scent of Bobby on them, who was the last person to wear them. That probably overpowers any other scent. All right, I'll go back to the squad. Sorry about that. I know you were hoping <laughs> that would solve everything. Well, I, I'm going to look on the other side of the fence. The other side of the fence is a house. All right. Yes. I'll yeah, tell there's a, even there. like a little, um, it's a, a house that faces like a different cul-de-sac. There's like a, an alley that comes down here and comes out like this. And there's like a all the sacky thing over here like that. And mm -hmm. this fence comes to a house that sits like that uh, with the, you know, the, the normal opening side over here. This is just some like sketchy alleyway that connects these two properties. I'll say mm -hmm. maybe the scent that we want to acquire is on this side of the fence. I, mm. I cross-examined the free thoughts in the area and I picked up one from someone who was cackling taking off the boots and then climbed this fence so are, are there a cackling there person black muddy roads. footprints on the other side of the fence Neil? Yeah there are muddy footprints on the other side of the fence and they're like not shoe prints they're someone barefoot they're toe prints, heel prints Footprints, as it were. Yes. Prince of a foot. <laughs> All right. Um, or are they feet of a prince? Uh, not likely. Unless it's a reverse Cinderella. Hmm. I mean, there's going to be some sort of twist. Maybe the twist is that there's not a twist, and you guys are just going to look for the twist, but it's not actually there. I'm just finding the clues. We're going to go where the evidence takes us. All right. All right. Where does it take you? Where does it take us, Neil? Yeah. We can follow the prince, and we can have uh, <laughs> the dog pick up the scent from the prince. Yes. Well, you're going to have to hop the fence into this poor, innocent person's backyard then. Yes. But... The footprints go into the back door of the house over here. Hmm. So they were here. Let me go around to the front of the house and see the name on the mailbox. Uh, it's just, it's like a, an acronym. It's just a big, like, S-I-D. S-I-D. Mm-hmm. Those are not the initials of Mary Old. S well, can we discern uh, if it's like a male or a female from the footprints, like smaller size footprints or larger size? Definitely male. They would yeah, fit the he, boots that they were in. Yeah, I think we established they were men. Well, it could be a woman wearing male boots yeah. just to throw the track off. I think that's what John was getting at. Yeah. It could be, but the the feet that be, that were in the boots, uh, now that you have the actual footprints, are clearly man-sized feet. Oh, these can I dogs? gauge their height from it? Because you can, because I gauge their, for their height from the feet size. Uh, you can gauge the f boot print size, right? It's going to be about a, a 10. So yeah. it would, you can't, like, you know, whoever wears a size 10 could, there's a, a variable in height All right, fair enough, that, you know? fair enough. But it's about a size 10 footprint, so about someone who normally has that. So I think yeah. you gauge the height by how far apart the prints are, by their stride. Oh, oh, right. By and the, you also the look at how deep the footprints are to take a guess about right. the light. Well, that will give you footprint. weight. The depth will give you weight, right? But the distance between yeah. steps will give you right. gait, which will roughly give you height. All right. Well, this gauge. Ooh, all right. Yeah, so the person is probably around uh, ballparking at five mm. eight, plus around or minus five, two eight. inches. Yeah, yeah plus yeah. or minus two around inches, uh, six to ten, five, five six eight. to five ten. All right. So how how tall is the old man? Five nine. All right. Okay, in the ballpark. Okay. How how deep does it look like it was a pretty heavy person or a light person? Depth footprints. Uh, not particularly heavy. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Do we knock uh, on the door? See who S I D is. Just, uh, you're knocking the front door. Yes, and someone should watch uh, the back door. Yeah, I'm at the back. I'm at the back. Okay. All right, you're at the back. Everyone else goes to the front. Bad windows. Are there any windows on the side? There is a window on the side. Yeah. All right. Because it would be very dramatic if we knocked on the door and somebody left out <laughs> the escaped. Mm. So, if anyone's got a bear trap to put underneath the window. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I've got a grappling hook. You could lay the grappling hook with the hook going up. All right, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> All right, you create an unwieldy caltrop. Mm. <laughs> Uh, all right, party members. So I guess the rest of us knock in the front door. There's no answer. Hmm. I'm gonna kick open the door. All right, give me an open doors check. Okay. What do you need? I don't, I don't know. Give me a d20. I have an eight. Can you want to roll an 8 lock? or lower on a d20. You kick the door, and surprisingly, even though that on a normal door it, this would fail, it opens on this one. The door actually kind of cracks under the weight. You can see it's rotted to its core. Uh, your foot goes right through the door. I guess actually your foot goes through the door and the door doesn't open, but you can now reach through and unlock it if you want. Sure, I'll do that. Old door, wait, wait. yeah. Everything needs to be done legally. <clears throat> There's yeah, no law in this yeah. town. I look up at the attorney. There clear signs that someone has tried to damage it and force entry. <laughs> yes, there we go. I open the door. This gives I it. step inside. You step inside? Okay. I walk away. I walk away. Well, I'm, I'm going to investigate this inside. door to make sure there's no crime that's happened inside. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. You guys are inside the house now? I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna call out being because, you know, I'm not to the court and I'm investigating a potential crime. I'll be shouting out, hello? Hello, is, is everyone okay in here? We saw that the door, someone had attempted to break in the door. We need, wanted to do a welfare <laughs> check. There's no response <laughs> from the inside. We need to search and make sure that there's nobody who's injured or, or dead in here. I'm going to look for muddy footprints in the house. Especially uh, coming in the back window. Yeah, so you guys open the door and step inside, and the house is a mess. There is, like, little bits of rotting food all over the place. No, oh, none of the furniture is in good shape. It's all in disarray. This looks like it's been abandoned, or maybe it's inhabited by drug addicts or squatters or people who are just, like, really into punk rock. You know, it's got that... Uh, unkempt style built uh, inside. You said there's rotting food. Mm hmm. Not right, a lot, any, but a little. Any, any of these food scraps look like they might have come from a lesbian bar, you know, like sushi or something. <laughs> there are no fish tacos anywhere in the house. <laughs> okay. I took sushi. You took it there. I I want the record to reflect sushi. <laughs> we know exactly what you're talking about, Rob. The record reflects this now, Rob. Don't worry. I've got writing it all down. <laughs> I just wanted that stated for the wiki. All right. Yeah. Continue. <laughs> all right. Let's go investigate. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll sign you the back. Window. Yeah, are there any muddy footprints? Absolutely. There are muddy footprints that come right up to the back door, uh, take a couple of steps inside, and then there's like some weird pitter-patter around, and then they're gone without leaving anywhere. Can I investigate that area around the pitter-patter? Absolutely. Give me a perception check. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's just a mess of footprints all over the place. <clears throat> you can't make any th sense of it, Armin Armand. But writer, ace detective or something. I don't remember. Attorney. Ace Attorney. Writer. Attorney. Ace writer. Got it. Uh, you can see that this is clearly the like the uh, I'm trying to put on shoes, 
but like I keep having to step around so like I put this one shoe on and I'm like hobbling on one foot and then I get it on and you know it's the footprints of somebody balancing while they put on new shoes so for someone shoes. yeah I'll explain that to everyone at first I thought perhaps this person was a vampire that turned into a bat to escape but on second thought perhaps they were just hopping around putting on new shoes yeah, so it looks like they, they left the house, came through the alleyway, hopped, uh, took off the boots, hopped the fence, came into this house and put on new boots and the trail vanishes right there. What sort of ploy is this? Who would do such a thing? Were the boots inside the house or outside? The uh, the door? footsteps go inside the house. Okay, so the boots were, the boots they uh, assumedly put on were, were inside when they put them on? Yes. Was the back door have a lock on it? Yes, but it, it was locked? unlocked when you guys came in. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, All right, I am, I'm gonna look around. I need to get a sense, I'm gonna try to get a sense of the nature of what these new shoes might be. I look around for any dioramas or shoe boxes under the, the bed or up on the closet or like somewhere where someone thought like, oh, this is box could be useful. I shouldn't just throw it away. <laughs> you know what? There's not a single shoebox in this entire place. Not a one. Not even a diorama? Not even a diorama. This looks like a squatter's home. There's all sorts of refuse everywhere. No shoeboxes. Those shoes could be stolen. Does anyone else have any ideas? I'm gonna look around for thieves' camps indications on this building. Ooh, good call on the outside and the inside. There, uh, there is a marker on the fence near the front door that says, uh, or it's a little symbol that means leave this house alone. Mm. Hmm. I'll point this out to Garrett. I nod. I pick up my uh, improvised caltrop. Excellent. Well, let's look around for any more clues. Might be more that we can, things that will help us figure out who this could be. Okay, yeah, you look around. Um, what else do you notice about this place? I got a 31, do I find like a little leather bound book that says Diary of Mary Old Man? <laughs> No, no, there's nothing like that at all. Um, in fact, you're just like, about to give up hope when you notice something odd. There is a, um, a what do you call it? Uh, a hoe in here, like for for farming. That's that's a disrespectful term. Garden hoe. That's a garden hoe. Garden variety hoe. Okay. <laughs> that's. Still disrespectful. If anything, that's more disrespectful. What What do you want me to call it? A uh, a metal plated American? What What is the term here? <laughs> they prefer to be called gardening implements. You find a <laughs> loose gardening implement. It's not well you know, constructed. This, this, this takes me back to the, the misogyny case I had to put up against Santa. <laughs> The misogyny case against Santa? He's always going around, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> oh my god. All right. So what can you tell us about this hoe deal? Uh, so, it's a little bit loose. It looks like it's been used a whole bunch and it's starting to fall apart. A hoe such as might be used by somebody who is into garden. Well, it is a gardening hoe. Well, there's like, are there according plants to Wikipedia, out back? there's lots of different types. <laughs> are there what? Are there plants out back? Poisonous uh, plants? Or... There are plants out back, and they look fairly well tended to. All right. Can we see if these are also herbalisty or spiet plants? Yeah. Uh, if. Our herbalist will go take a look at them. These appear 
to mostly be regular plants um, that are tended to, but there are a couple of things of interest here. There's some... You know what? We're actually well overdue for our break. Why don't we take our break right now? And when we come back, I'll tell you all about these plants. See you guys on the next episode. Classic cliffhanger going before he tells us the variety of plants. <laughs> 